Namaste. So today we're going to continue with the qualifications for one who wants to uh, approach Brahman realization by means of self-inquiry, Atma Vichara. And of course, this is given in the first few verses of Aparokshanabhutihi. So we've got three verses to look at today, so let's get started. Om Sadaiva Vasana Tyagaha Samo Yamiti Shabditaha Nigroho Bahya Vritinang Dhamma It Yad Bhihiyate Sadaiva at all times Vasana Tyagaha Abandonment of desires. Shama, control of the mind. Ayang, this. Iti, as. Shabditaha, is termed. Nigraha, restraint. Bahyavritinam, of the external functions of the organs. Dhamma, Dhamma. Iti, as. Abhidiyate is called. Abandonment of desires at all times is called shama, and restraint of the external functions of the organs is called dhamma. Now these are the first two of the six treasures. And you might say, well, what is the difference between these and the ones we already looked at, which are discrimination between the real and the unreal, or the seer and the seen, and renunciation or indifference, uh, better translated as indifference, that one simply does not care anymore for material sense objects. Well, the difference is, look at the Sanskrit, Abandonment of desires. Vasana tyagaha. Vasana means a particular type of desire, which is a mental habit, a conditioning that we've inherited from previous lives, which nevertheless drives us to make uh, certain attachments, especially to subtle things like the desire to be an individual, the desire to be dependent on the forces of nature, and so on. And tyagaha, tyagaha means renunciation. So here we are talking about renunciation, but it happens on a mental level. Again, these are not about gross rules. These are about mental attitudes. So we should give up very deliberately the mental habits derived from long association with material energy. And then we should also give up attachment and association with sense objects, dhamma. Now, why is this? You know, looking at the views on our channel, everything was going really great until we started about talking about things like renunciation and the qualifications for enlightenment. Then the number of views went way down. Why is that? People want to have their cake and eat it too. But guess what? It's not possible. If you are addicted to and dependent on maya, that which is not, the uh, imaginary world of duality, how can you say, how, then how can you assert yourself as being Brahman? 
In other words, how can you become self-realized? You can't. You can't. It's just like when you're negotiating with someone. Let's say you have a business and you're negotiating a deal with a big company. I mean, a really big company like Google or something like that. And Google knows that you're actually completely dependent on their services. Now, you're giving up a great deal of power. You're giving up a lot of your bargaining position by being dependent on the services of the company you're negotiating with, isn't it? That's common sense or business sense anyway. And it's the same with Maya. Really what we're doing when we try to approach liberation is that we're saying to Maya, I don't need you anymore. I want a better deal. I'm negotiating. I want better terms. Huh? But if Maya knows, and believe me, she'll know, <laughs> if you're dependent on her, her goods and services, she knows she's, she's got you by the short hairs. <laughs> she's got you by the gonads. And that diminishes your ability to declare, Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. She's going to say, uh-uh, honey. <laughs> you know, it, it really diminishes your power. So to regain our power, we have to declare independence from Maya. And the best way to do that is to cut off all these dependencies and, and assert ourselves as being the Absolute. I am Brahman. I am the Self. So the way you do that is by setting aside these desires and sense objects. This theme is continued through the rest of the six treasures. So let's take a look at the next verse now. Vishaye bhya paravritihi paramo paratirhi sa sahanam sarvadukhanam titiksha sa shubha mata Vishaye bhya from objects of the senses Paravritihi, turning away. Parama, the highest. Uparatihi, uparati. He, verily, sa, that. Sahanang, endurance. Sarvadukhanang, of all sorrow or pain. Titiksha, forbearance. Sa, that. Shubha, conducive to happiness. Mata, is known. Turning away completely from all sense objects is the height of uparati. And patient endurance of all sorrow and pain is known as titiksha, which is conducive to happiness. So how do you attain enlightenment? Well, you have to go through samadhi. Samadhi means turning away from all sense objects and focusing within on the self, on Brahman. And this, of course, means not to get caught up in not only uh, material enjoyment, but also material suffering. So if we're suffering and getting really attached to it, negatively attached. Huh? Like, I really don't want this suffering. This is nasty. This is terrible. And you forget all about your practice. How are you going to attain enlightenment? Especially at the time of death, when the body is falling apart, the mind is going crazy, uh, because all the stuff that it's attached to is going away. How are you going to remain calm and centered on Brahman? 
So you need to practice that now. Don't expect to approach death without having practiced death. This is why I always say, huh? I've said this for years, die now, avoid the rush. The rush means waiting to the last minute and then when death comes, trying to remain equipoised, you can't do it. You have to practice it. That's why in meditation, we uh, practice meditating on the void. That's uparati. It means turning away from all sense objects, both positive and negative. And titiksha, simply tolerating the dukkha, the suffering, because suffering is endemic in this material world. It's gonna happen. Uh, I remember my Adi Guru was on his deathbed. His bodily functions were basically shutting down and all his senior men were around him. And he looked at them and he pointed to each one. And he said, this is going to happen to you. So we cannot deal with that unless we practice it beforehand. And that's the purpose of meditation. And the means is this detachment from sense objects. So let's go on. Nigama charyavakyeshu bhakti shradheti vishruta Chitai ka grigyang tu salakshye samadhani mitti smritam Nigama charyavakshyeshu In the words of the Vedas and the teachers Bhaktihi, faith and love Shradheti as Shraddha Vishruta is known Chittaikagriyang, concentration of the mind, to and. Salakshye, on the only object, sat. Samadhanam, deep concentration. Iti, thus, smritam, is regarded. Implicit faith in the words of the Vedas and the teachers who interpret them is known as Shraddha and concentration of the mind on the only object, Sat, that is Brahman, is regarded as Samadhana. So this is what we were talking about before. First of all, to get any of this or to realize any of it, one has to have faith in the words of the Vedas, the Shruti. See, the Vedic literature is divided into two broad categories, Shruti and Smriti. The Shruti are the four Vedas and the Upanishads, basically 108 Upanishads, and there are some other ones called Upa, Upapanishads. And then the whole rest of the Vedic literature is called Smriti. That means the Puranas, the Itihasas, the Yogas, uh, the Tantras, and so on. So many ancillary literatures to explain the four Vedas and the Upanishads. And the four Vedas open with the statement in the beginning of the Rig Veda, truth is one, but it is called different names by the wise. So some people call it bhakti, some people call it karma, some people call it jnana, some people call it sat, <laughs> some call it brahman, some call it atman, some call it the nirvana or nibbana. You see? But these are all names for the same thing, meaning eternal existence, that which never changes, that which never goes out of 
existence, that which is unborn and undying, and that is only Brahman. Brahman is the principal term used in the Vedas and Upanishads especially. So this Brahman is what we call the self. It's us, it's me, it's you and I at the core. And we're not talking about the temporary perishable ego that is defined in terms of worldly qualities and its attachments and associations. We're not talking about that self. That self is changeable and it's basically miserable. It's full of suffering and it comes and goes. The ego, the identity that we have in this life is different from the one we had in the past. Even in this life, the identity that we have in childhood is different from the one we have in adulthood and so on. So this is not the platform for realizing the absolute truth. Only Brahman, Sat. Therefore, the last of the six treasures is Samadhana, which means concentration of the mind on the unborn, undying, absolute existence, Sat, Brahma. So why is this so important? Because again, the more we are invested in the objects of the senses, the more we are attached to the things of this world, the harder it is for us to realize our actual identity, our actual self, Brahman within. But of course, if we can do that, that is the key to complete freedom. Aung Tatsa. Aung Shakti Aung.